Alright guys, welcome back. So this week we're going to be looking at how to randomly generate these asteroids as opposed to just having them, like a few on the screen like this um, at the start, and then it's just running out altogether. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new invisible object, quite similar to our um, obj underscore score up here, that uh, generates these asteroids for us and will automatically generate a new set of asteroids when the previous set of asteroids has been fully destroyed. Uh, it's going to be very simple for now, and then in the next uh, next part, we're going to make some improvements to it and make it a bit um, a bit better than than what we do in this video. But the first thing we're going to do is get rid of all of these asteroids that are just sort of lying around here, um, because we're going to generate them all dynamically at runtime, and we won't need any of these asteroids just hand placed in the room like this. So I'm just going to hold Shift and the right mouse button, and just drag my mouse over these to delete them from the room, like that, and now they're all gone. So next up is we just need to make um, a new object for our spawner. So I'll go ahead, right click in objects, go to create object, just as we always do, and name it similar to how we've named everything else so far, which is obj underscore spawner. Doesn't need to have a sprite set, um, all of these default, they, everything else in here just needs to be leaving, needs to be left at its default even, so visible on, solid uses physics and persistent off, depth at zero. Let's just leave it as it is. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the step event to this object, okay? So this event runs every single frame of the game. We know how that works, okay? So in the step event, I'm going to drag in an execute code action, the thing that we basically always use, and bring up the code editor. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say every single frame of the game, this object is going to check to see whether or not there are any asteroids in the room, which, as we know now, there aren't at the beginning because we got rid of them all. And if there aren't, it's just going to create um, five asteroids in a random positions around the room. It's going to be as simple as that. If so, if uh, an exclamation mark here, um, when you're doing an if statement, if you write an exclamation mark, it's just essentially the symbol for not. So if not instance underscore exists, which is a yeah, turns yellow as a function, that's a function that will return true if. Um, the instant the object you tell it to look for exists and will turn false if it doesn't. And the object we're going to look for in the, the brackets is obj underscore asteroid. Close brackets, turns red because it found it. And close bracket again. So if not instance exists, obj underscore asteroid. So if this if there is one of these asteroids in the room, then um, then this will return false because of this not symbol here. And if there isn't any, then this will return true because, again, of the not symbol here. So it just inverts it. So because we want to carry out the stuff if there are no asteroids in the room. So that's why we use this not symbol here. Because if we were to just write that, then it would say if there is an, uh, an instance of the asteroid in the room, not if there isn't one. So that's what we do there. Now, we've used if statements before to do questions and things and say like oh if speed equals this then do this to speed and so on and so forth um, here what we're doing a little differently is instead of writing if and then the condition and then the action immediately on the end of the line is we're opening a block of code with these uh, curly braces here like this and, and so instead of putting the action like we want to carry out as a result of the condition here on the end of the line we're going to put those actions inside of these curly braces instead. So if this condition resolves as true, or not true rather because of the not symbol, then um, any actions inside of this block of code will get carried out, okay? Um, and if the condition is not true, um, then it skips over and uh, we'll just carry on uh, with the code down here and we'll skip over any code that we put in here, okay? So it's just a way of organizing it when you want to do more than one thing as a result of an if statement because we want to create several of these uh, asteroids and not just one. If we're just doing one, we could have just popped it on the end here, but we're going to do a few, okay? And now if there is, um, so if there's no asteroids left, all we want to do is create a bunch of new ones. So I'm going to write instance underscore create, um, open a bracket, and write random, and open another bracket, room underscore width the x coordinate. As you remember, with instance create, we need to provide the x coordinate, the y coordinate, and the object we're trying to create. So if the x coordinate, I'm just going to generate a random value for the uh, the x coordinate, 
between zero and the width of the room. I just write, I mean, I could manually write in 1024 or whatever, but um, if by doing this I can change the room width around and this code will still work as intended, right? And then the y coordinate, I'm gonna do the same thing, random, open bracket, room, underscore height. Again, those variables turned, both turned red because they're built-in uh, variables of the game. The um, game maker knows what room width means and what room height means. It's well, it's exactly what they sound like. That's the width of the room in pixels, and that's the height of your current room in pixels. Okay. And then the object that we're trying to create is obj underscore asteroid, which we know. Let me go on. I should point out as well, by the way, that this if statement here that's checking to see if there's uh, no asteroids left in the room. That also counts for any child objects of obj underscore asteroid, which we know we have one, obj underscore asteroid underscore s. So the smaller version of the asteroid also count in this check, okay? Because it's checking for this object and any of its children. And now I'm going to copy that uh, instance create line. I'm just going to paste it a few more times like this. Um, you can see I've like indented here by just pressing tab. So instead of writing on along this line uh, here, I press tab so I can write like a little bit indented like that. And I generally always do that just as a matter of preference to make my code a little easier to read whenever I'm inside of a block of code, like within um, whenever I've opened a set of brackets, I'll indent it slightly so you can see very clearly where um, things like if statements start and end. Okay. So yeah, it's just going to create five um, asteroids just randomly around the room. Um, the only problem with that is that if we create them in a completely random position, then there's a reasonably decent chance that at some point or other we're going to create an asteroid directly on top of the player and kill them. That's obviously not good. So to fix that, we're going to go into obj underscore asteroid. Now in the create event for uh, obj underscore asteroid, I'm going to open up the, the code action. and some space um, at the top here and basically I'm gonna do a quick check to see if this asteroid when it's created which is during the create event um, if it's on top of a player then just randomize its position again okay um, and keep doing that until we're somewhere that the player is not it's okay because if we could generate the same position again randomly so how we're gonna do this is I'm gonna use a, what's called a while loop, okay, so I'm going to type while, which turns yellow because Game Maker recognizes it, and open a pair of brackets, close a pair of brackets. All right, now whatever we put in these brackets, right, is going to be a condition, and Game Maker will um, evaluate that condition and see whether or not it's true, and as long as the condition in here is true, any actions between the next set of curly braces, anything here will get carried out constantly in a loop while whatever we put in here is true, okay? And it won't break out of that, so you can very easily screw up here and cause an infinite loop if you put something in here that remains true forever because the code will literally just loop through here and your game will freeze because it's just got stuck in an infinite loop, okay? So you have to be very careful when doing while loops. The, the while loop we're gonna do is gonna be place underscore meeting, uh, open brackets x comma y, comma, obj underscore player. Okay, that's going to do a very quick collision check, okay, um, at uh, these coordinates to see if whether or not this object is currently colliding uh, with the player object, okay? Very simple collision check. And while that is true, we're just going to randomize our x-coordinate and our y-coordinate in the same way we did when we created the asteroid in the first place. I'm going to say x equals random open bracket, room underscore width, close bracket, semicolon. And y equals random room underscore height, close bracket, semicolon. Okay, simple as that. So now with those two things done, okay, that's really all we need. And we just need to place um, obj underscore spawner into the room now. We'll pop it up here next to our score object. Hit play. See now that right away it's created five new asteroids because there weren't any asteroids to begin with. And if I just go ahead and hopefully destroy them all, hopefully without dying. And that's the last one. 
and you can see it's recreated a whole new set of asteroids. Technically there is still the problem, I guess, that an asteroid can appear really close to the player, so probably something better than, instead of just checking to see whether or not the asteroid has collided with the player um, when it spawned, it would be to check with that it's not within a certain square of the player or something like that, or a certain distance. But for now, this simple solution is, is good enough and it should work um, for now. Um, in the next part, we'll look at making this a little more interesting um, so it doesn't sort of instantly uh, spawn the asteroids and let, let it wait for a little length of time. And then also hopefully make it so we can sort of increase the difficulty over time as opposed to just spawning the same number of asteroids each time and so on and so forth. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that. Any comments, suggestions, questions, or whatever, leave them in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you're enjoying this. Hope you're learning from it. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks, guys.